for them to grasp now and get to grips with. It's it's still a bit of a, a bit of a parochial piece, I think, more than the album was. Yeah, I think at the time it definitely polarised audiences. People either loved it or wasn't quite sure about it. I won't say hate it, but they wasn't quite sure about it. But it's become a bit of a cult classic now, and I think revisiting it, it's obviously very powerful. I mean, you've explained a lot of reasons why. I mean, it, there are some very powerful scenes in it. Uh, how do you look at it now? I mean, th has your idea of the film changed over the years? The thing that I've had to carry with me is the fact that, <clears throat> that, um, that, that th is the, the scenes of abuse in the film and the scenes of, 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 uh, of drug use, the scenes of bullying. Uh, which were meant, in a sense, to be... Um, they were meant to be kind of images that were, you know, l like archetypical but average scenes of, of, of modern post-war life. And I now see, actually, lo looking at the, f the film, and, and, you know, again, when I came to do the Broadway version of this story with, with Des McEnough, I started to get an understanding that this was something that very, was very, very close to my experience, and a lot of it had unconsciously come out onto the page, um, is that um, some of that stuff is, is stuff that we're aware of, the broader spread of responsibility, for example, for, 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 for what happens when children are bullied for what happens when uh, people, young people become involved in, uh, in drugs, for what happens when they want to recover, for what happens when children are sexually abused, what happens when uh, children are in the care of people that they shouldn't be left in the care of. We now realise that the responsibility for all of those problems is something that is much more broadly shared. So what actually happens when we watch that stuff now is that it's not... It's not something that you can laugh at in quite the way that we tried to do in 1974. You know, at that time, there was still a sense that that uh, Tina Turner had to be turned into a kind of a gibbering heroin crack addict, you know, and she did a good job of it. But she had to be made to be made to seem completely and utterly out of control and crazy and 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 psychotic, uh, rather than what we know today, which is is that that uh, the, the 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 prostitute is both has 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 a responsibility for his or her actions, but also is a victim, and that the two things do coexist. You can be responsible for your own actions and be a victim and that it's important to own both of those elements of your experience before you can become what I call a survivor and so for me and what what I learned uh, it, it, what I've learned from Tommy over the years and the film is a big part of this watching it again today is is that um, survival in, in society is what's the most important thing surviving being able to get through a day, being able to have dignity and self-respect. It's disturbing to me today to know that my story uh, is in a sense so universal, you know, that so many people had similar experiences. Because when my parents, uh, uh, they were both RAF after the war, they were both keen to get back to their proper jobs of making music. I was two and a half, three, four. When I was about four, uh, something went wrong with my parents' marriage. And this was very, very, very common because people had been thrown together at the end of the war. And, uh, um, and my mother uh, decided to start to put me out into the care of various people and she tried a few people. And in the end, she decided to go and send me with my grandmother, send me to stay with my grandmother who lived down in Westgate by the sea. And, it, and that was a terrifying experience for me partly because of the fact that my grandmother was so sick mentally at the time it was also strange because my grandmother had abandoned my mother so my mother was kind of giving me to the person who had abandoned her in this kind of endless cycle of of uh really kind of you know reenacted uh, psychological nonsense and um The chief 
the chief impact that it had on me, because I did eventually go back home and I went back to my neighbourhood and back to my friends and back to the world that I knew in Acton where I'd grown up and... Uh, and then it was realised that my grandmother had been sick and various strange things had gone on, that um, for her and for me, um, it's not quite like, you know, I'm not exa it's not exactly, you know, a, bo a child called it story, uh, you know. But when I was with my grandmother, it was very, very, very shocking and lonely and disturbing. And what made it worse was is that my mother used to come down sometimes to visit me and stay quite briefly and then go away. And that my father used to communicate to me often with a letter and a postal order. So I felt very isolated and I felt trapped and imprisoned. And when I came back, what I realised was is that I'd been scarred with something which is really, really really common today, particularly for men, but for, I think for women too. Women have a, 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 a better, a better uh, mechanism for handling it, which is that they can have children, which men can't do. Men, can't, men can make children, but they can't have them, uh, which is abandonment. I have a tremendous problem with abandonment. And, um, uh, and so what that does is that creates a sense in me where I, I will try to help too much. I will say, you know, I'll try to say yes to things when I should say no. Um, I'm always afraid that if I make a commitment to somebody that, that where I go too far, that they might take everything that, that I've got to give and then not give anything back, that they might desert me. And at the heart of Tommy and at the heart of probably all of my work, and funnily enough, of a lot of blues music, which uh, the British um, uh, 60s bands picked up the, the tail end of it, R&B, which was the chart version of the blues in America. You know, people like Chuck Berry, John Lee Hooker, Bo Diddley, um, uh, artists of that, Ray Charles to a great extent, and a lot of, of, of those artists. Uh, was that feeling that you know that you trust somebody, you put yourself in their care, and then they abandon you, and that uh, and that the way that you you deal with that sense of abandonment, the threat of abandonment, the possibility that you're going to be cast aside by society, by the people that you care about, is through music, and uh, that Tommy is very much a, in a way um, not only a story about. Tommy, but also it's also a story in a way about that process because it includes the beginning, the middle, and the end, which is the the artist becoming the great messiah who then falls from grace, and um, which is inevitable when 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 the person who holds up the mirror says to you, oh, "And by the way, you know, I'm not just like you; I am you. You know, you are me. We have we both we both share the same condition, and." Uh, so for me today, like look, uh, looking at Tommy, what I see is 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 is, is, is that I had I had no idea, you know. If you if you remember that before I made the film, I'd also worked on Lifehouse, pre, 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 uh, had prefigured, had a pre sense of of the internet, the World Wide Web, what that would do to to the world as we know it, what it would do particularly to to uh, 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 vulnerable people who who uh, 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 needed support needed friendship who felt isolated who felt lonely and would would normally look to you know to music dancing and maybe drink drugs and housebreaking as i often say you know for ways of uh, of, of of finding themselves would find themselves stuck in in my lifehouse story it wasn't in front of a computer screen it was in a an experience suit you know in the ultimate couch potato experience where you don't even live your own life and uh so for me, the whole, the, the, what I've tried to do, practically speaking, in my life, is not only deal with the art, but also to deal with the result. And I used the word earlier on, survivor. I regard myself as a survivor of childhood abuse, of the post-war apocalyptic condition, of irresponsible parenting, of neglect, of uh, brutality, of bullying of uh, social cowardice, of, 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 of bad education, of, of poor guidance, extraordinarily dishonest policing. Um, I mean, right the way across the world, ev ev everything that I look at, I have somehow survived. And I know that I've survived it simply by being true 
to my own belief system. And my own belief system is something that I've developed by being a performer and a musician and a commentator. I look at the people around me and I try to serve them. And by serving them, I find myself. And when I find myself sometimes, I find somebody that's not maybe 98% right. And... Um, Tommy is that. Tommy is a, 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 a you know, a, a, a cockle shell of, 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 of that whole period of, of growth. You know, I think we're kind of getting through to the other side of it now. You know, we've just had the Iraq war and whether it was a good thing or a bad thing, what we know now is that it's safe for anybody to say what's on their mind whether they're for it, whether they're against it, whether they're undecided, whatever, it's, it's, it's safe to speak. You know, freedom of speech is vital. Freedom of action is also important. And, um, you know, in the Tommy story, what you see is somebody who, who gets caught up in a, in a, a whirl of, of uh, uh, what do they call it? What's the buzzword of the, of, of the decade? Dysfunction. The dysfunctional family. You know, what's a dysfunctional family? normal people <laughs> and often people with good hearts that haven't been taught how to live properly you know so a lot of that stuff that 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 you see in Tommy which is which is parodied which is colorful which is light and it's set to this kind of funny music you know when you know the background of it there comes a point at which you know you want to you, you want to scream out you know oh my god I wish I'd I wish I'd really known my history before I started on this. I wish I'd done a bit of research and uh, done it subsequently. But now all I can do is try and bleed it back into the project and give the project not greater depth. I'm not trying to be pretentious about this, but to give some understanding of possibly why it resonated so deeply with the public. It's a, you know, if it's such a silly fucking story, as everybody keeps telling me, if it's so pretentious, if the whole idea of rock opera is such a fucking cock idea why has it grossed so many millions of dollars why do people love it so much i think it's it's because it has this way of triggering stuff that is deep-seated and that's all and i did it you know quite uh disingenuously you know